Hello everyone, how are you? Hey, what happened on Daryl Dixon, The Walk of Dead, episode 3? Great episode, I thought, from start to finish. Um, It started off with Daryl, Isabella, Lorette, the other survivor, and the other nun. They still have not said her name whatsoever. Um, They're traveling through the outskirts of Paris, and um, Isabella tells Daryl them to stop. And they stop this old abandoned um, video theater. He said, there's a guy in there that might be able to help us. His name's John Perr. They go in there and they find him. And he's gone cuckoo. Because she's not seen him for quite a while. He has walkers tied up on stage playing music. It was creepy, man. They had one guy, one walker had like a tuba stuck inside of his chest. Coming out of its mouth. So, it was walking around with like a tuba. And then he had another walker that was... Got like a bird cage over its head, tied to a rope, and every time it moved forward, it would fall backwards and hit a drum. Stuff like that, right? So Daryl and Isabel was like, let's get the hell out of here. That was like the intro to the episode that was cool. Then it shows them traveling through the outskirts of Paris still, and they decide to go for a cemetery. And on the way, Daryl stops and reads this tombstone of this famous singer from a band. And Daryl's like, oh, sh crap. He didn't make it through the apocalyptic season. That sucks. That was funny. I love that moment. And as they go for the cemetery, they're surrounded by people. And they've got like, bows and arrows, spears, you name it. And this old guy walks up. And he says, who are you? And apparently Isabel has never traveled this far into Paris. So she don't know who he is either. So he says, uh, John Paris sent us. And he says, oh, the old guy in the music the uh, movie theater. Yep. How's he been? They just walked like they don't know what to say, right? So he says, well, come along. So they walk with them. And there's 64 survivors in this part of Paris. And they're in like an abandoned warehouse, storage warehouse. And they've been living there and all that. And Daryl's taking in the cool view and the Eiffel Tower. And it's like, the top of it's gone. Daryl's like, what happened to the top of the Eiffel Tower? And the old guy says, there was military helicopter crashed into it when the shit hit the fan. And Daryl says, any chance you got like a radio that works? And this old guy walks out and says, we got something better than a radio. He's got a pigeon. Like a home in pigeon when they used to put like notes on their feet and that. Daryl says, no, that ain't going to work. Um, they're talking and the old guy says, well, tell you what. There's a nightclub and uh, the guy owns it has some unique items and maybe he has a radio or something you can use because they still want to get to the port and all that but he still wants to call home to call the commonwealth alexandria and let him know what's up right so as they're at this place Lorette, the other survivor that apparently has visions walks up to this old lady hugs her and says i'm sorry for the loss of your husband recently and like Daryl and them was taken back as this is the first time they met these people, right? So now Daryl's starting to think maybe this guy has visions, right? Because how else would he know that her, the old lady's husband just died, right? So, um, the nun and Lorette's, I mean, the nun stays. Um, Isabel, Daryl, and Lorette and the old guy go to this nightclub. And on the way, Isabel wants to go to this apartment complex of where she lived in. So Daryl and her you know, isolate themselves from the other group. They go there. They search for the apartment. She finds a picture of her sister to give to Lorette, his mother. And he still don't know that that they're related, right? Um, That she's his aunt. And Daryl starts questioning her about that. And she says, you don't need to know my business. Daryl's like, fair enough. Then as they're going through the apartment complex, they go to leave. Walker starts showing up. So they take off. And they get to the bottom level, and there's a walker chained up. And Daryl goes to kill, and Isabella tells him not to. Apparently, it was one of the people that lived in the apartment complex. So Daryl says, okay, fair enough. Then all of a sudden, these walkers start coming through the windows, falling down, just like the Negan Maggie show and Walker did when they in New York. Apparently, they did the same kind of thing there. But what was cool here is one walker landed and went splat, but got back up and like reset its bones. That was oh, you can hear the bones reset, and that was cool. And they're like, what the hell, right? And then this auto walker start getting up. It was before when they fall for like 18 stories high. They're dead, right? But not these walkers. So Daryl tries to get at this door and it's locked. And it's got like 
reeds and all that all grown over it. So he stabs one of the walkers with a pitchfork, and it's an acid walker, so he shoves that right into the door, so the acid melts the weeds and the chain on the door. That was awesome. Smart thinking there, Daryl. They got away, um, made it to the other people in the nightclub, and she give Isabel gives her nephew the picture of his mother. Now, at the nightclub, they're talking to these two punks, um, and um, there's this other guy, and um, they're trying to get inside. And the old guy tosses this one guy a bag. He says, you still like hazelnuts? Yeah, that's what's in the bag. You can go on in. So apparently, to get this nightclub, you just need any hazelnuts. That was awesome. Um, they get in the nightclub. They meet the two guys. Just try to talk to them to trade. Isabel has a bunch of like prescription pills. Drugs on that. From the purse. Which she had carrying around. And Daryl didn't know about that. And she says... Before I was a nun, I used to party and all. They was like, understandable. So anyways, the two guys decide to take the stop, but not to help them with a radio. And all of a sudden, this guy walks up, pulls out a switchblade, and cuts one guy right here in the face and tells him to get lost out of the club. And he says, I'm the actual owner of this club. And Daryl says, nice to meet you. And he turns around, and holy shit, folks, it's the guy from last week's episode where... Isabel and her sister got saved by this guy and they left him at a gas station. He survived the zombie apocalypse. He owns this nightclub. Because like I said before, Isabel has not been this far into Paris since shit hit the fan. So um, they start talking and he recognizes Isabel. He says, what happened to you? She says, I became a nun. He's like, seriously? You became a nun? He's like, yeah. He's like, what about your sister? She said, she died in childbirth. And labor. He says, oh, sorry to hear that. And then, um, it's me and her have a thing going. And she's like, bullshit, right? And all this. And then he starts saying stuff about her sister that, that he should not know, right? And he says, remember that time when your sister came home and found you almost overdosed in the apartment? And who do you think saved your life? And then he pulls up her orange sleeve. And she says, how would you know about these scars? She says, because I was the one that saved you. And all that, she says, so you were for my sister. He says, yes. But she didn't want me to tell you, no, no about you and all this yet. We're in the middle of a relationship and stuff. So he said, that baby is mine. And then Isabel looks at Lorette, her nephew. And then he causes to see the way she's looking at him. And he realizes that's his son grown up. So he goes to talk to him. And Isabel shoves him back. Her and Daryl escape the nightclub. And all that. And um, they basically go back to the storage warehouse. With the old guy. And they are a group of 64 survivors. And um, then it shows the light club again. And it shows that rebel soldier. He shows up with reinforcements. The guy with the tattoo across his neck. And face. And he's searching for Daryl Dixon. And Isabella. So. The episode ends with two clips. It ends with. This, um, that military guy. Rebel guy with a bunch of soldiers attacking that warehouse. Start shooting places up. People start getting killed. And uh, I'm f the only way they knew about that is the guy that owns an eye club that was Isabella's sister's boyfriend must have told him where they went. That's the only way they could figure that out, right? Or somebody else at the club did. Maybe they beat the people up in the club and started shooting people in the club, killing them. We don't know, right? Um, so anyways, Daryl... And Isabel, Lorette, and the other nine, and the survivors, they scatter, right? Because shit's hitting the fan. Um, Daryl starts fighting that leader of the rabble, kicking his ass on top of a rooftop. Puts him in a GG clutch chokehold, and he's just choking him. Then all of a sudden, gunfire from the other soldiers. Daryl takes off running, jumping over rooftops. He lands on a rooftop, and it caves in on him. And that's what happens at that part of the end of the episode. Now, it shows the scientist. And the female rebel leader. And they're talking. And um, he says, experiment, whatever number's ready. So he turns his daw knob thing. And music or sound or something aggravates the zombie. And it breaks his chains. Its head explodes. He says, well, it lasts 18 seconds. That's a failure. And she's talking. And she says, ah, she's pissed that Daryl Dixon, um, when he was on that ship that caused mutiny, and they're apparently the walkers on that ship. Him and the other people, crew on the ship, killed the walkers on that. So she's mad about her walkers being killed. And she wants to get back at Daryl Dixon. 
And this is scary how she's going to do it. She's looking for the Commonwealth on the map. If she finds out where Alexandria and the Commonwealth is and sends those new breed of acid walkers and the ones that fall out of the buildings and can reset the bones and stuff, shit's going to hit the fan for Ezekiel on that, right? So that's how she's going to get back at Daryl. And this old guy that ends when he walks away, there's a walker and like a glass flask with like bubbles and all that with test tubes and everything stuck to it. And this old guy, apparently he just loves experimental walkers. It's freaky. And he looks like he has a comb in his hearing forever. Um, so there you have it, folks. Great episode. Um, it show more about the new walkers, how they're being made, the new variants. Daryl went through the top of a roof. I don't know if he's injured or not. And let me know below in the comment section if you're watching this show. Do you think that the guy that runs owns the nightclub freely gave up where they were living, staying at? Or do they think that um, the rebel leader in that killed some of his friends in the nightclub till he confessed where they were? I think that's what happened because he kind of looks like he's not a bad person. Oh, I forgot to tell you. The way they have him dressed up, if you play Resident Evil 4, I remember Louise... The guy that helps Leon and Ashley and Ada Young in the game. He's dressed up like that. Like the vest, the jewelry on the fingers. It's awesome. And he's cool how he flips that switchblade around. It's awesome. Um, there you have it, folks. I cannot wait to watch episode four this Sunday. It looks like it's going to be very good. Um, there you have it, folks. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye. What you think?